Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are grateful unto you for this evening. Thank you for your mercy and love towards our lives. Thank you for bringing us to your presence tonight. I ask, O oh Lord in heaven, as we've come before you, O oh Lord, you will touch our lives, you will bless our lives, and you roll away mountains from our lives in Jesus' name. Our lives will not remain the same after tonight's service in Jesus' name. As we sing praises now, we pray that, Lord, you inhabit the praises of your children. Thank you because you've answered our prayer. For we've prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Adonai, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good. Almighty God, hallowed be thy name. Your dominion is forevermore, forevermore. We worship you, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good, Almighty God. Hallowed be thy name. Your dominion is forevermore, forevermore. We worship you, we worship you. Son of God, you are so good. Hallowed be thy name. Your dominion is forevermore. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, honor. We give you honor. We give you honor. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen, amen. Praise God, amen. Praise God, amen. We give you all the glory. We give you honor. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, honor. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Mighty warrior, great in battle. Jehovah is your name. 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 I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. I know my Redeemer liveth. 
I know my Redeemer liveth, he'll live it forevermore. He is the Lord, he changes not. He is the Lord, he changes not, he changes not. He changes not. Jesus is the Lord, he changes, he changes not. He changes not. Jesus is the Lord, He changes not. He is the Lord, He changes not. He is the Lord, He changes not. He changes not. He is the Lord, He changes not. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future, and life is worth the living just because he leaves. Because he leaves, because he leaves, I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, all fear is gone. And because I know he holds my future. And life is worth a living just because he leaves. Because he leaves, I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, all fear is gone. And because I know he holds my future. And life is worth a living just because he leaves. Because he leaves, I can face tomorrow. Because he leaves, all fear is gone. He holds my future, and life is worth a living just because he leaves. Jesus never fails, he will never fail. The man of the sword may let you down, but Jesus never fails, never fails, never fails. The man of the sword may let you down, but Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. He will never fail. The man of the sword may let you down, but Jesus never fails. Never fails. He will never fail. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Expect a miracle when you pray. Expect a miracle when you pray. Expect a miracle when you pray for the Lord. Is seated on the throne, on the throne. When you pray, expect a miracle. When you pray, expect a miracle. When you pray for the Lord, is seated on the throne, on the throne. When you pray. When you pray, expect a miracle when you pray.
before the Lord is seated on the throne, on the throne. When you pray, when you pray for the Lord, is seated on the throne, call upon me in the time of trouble, call upon me, I will answer you, will answer you, in the time of trouble, call upon me, I will answer you. Call upon me in the hour of trouble. Call upon me, I will answer you, will answer you. Call upon me in the day of trouble. Call upon me, I will answer you, will answer you. Call upon me, I will answer you. Leave it there, leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there, leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, He will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. And leave it there. God's not dead. He's alive. God's not dead. He's alive. God's not dead. He's alive. I feel him in my heart. I feel him in my soul. I feel him all over me, over me. He's alive, God's not dead. He's alive, God's not dead. He's alive, I feel him in my heart. I feel him in my soul. I feel him all over me, over me. He's alive, God's not dead. He's alive. I feel him in my heart, I feel him in my soul, I feel him all over me. God will answer, he will answer. Just go to him in faith, believing, he will answer every prayer. He will answer. Will answer. Go to him in faith, believing he will answer every prayer. He will answer. My God will answer. Just go to him in faith, believing he will answer every prayer. Our God is able, He's able, I know He's able, I know my God is able to carry me through. My God is able, He's able, I know He's able, I know my God is able to carry me through. For He has healed the brokenhearted and set the captives free. He healed the sick, raised the dead and walked upon the sea. My God is able, He's able. I know he's able, I know my God is able to carry me through. My God is able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my God is able to carry me through. My God is able, he's able, 
I know he's able, I know my God is able to carry me through. For he has healed the brokenhearted and set the captives free. He healed the sick, raised the dead and walked upon the sea. My God is able, he's able, I know he's able, I know my God is able to carry me through. Why worry? When you can pray, trust in Jesus and he will lead the way. Don't be a doubting Thomas, just lean upon his promise. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? When you can pray, trust in Jesus and he will lead the way. Don't be a doubting Thomas, just lean upon his promise. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? Why worry when you can pray? Trust in Jesus and he will lead the way. Don't be a doubting Thomas, just lean upon his promise. Why worry, worry, worry when you can pray? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Satan will have to flee when we pray in the name of Jesus. Tell me who has the power to oppose in the name of mighty Jesus. We have the victory, we have the victory. We have the victory in the name of Jesus. Satan will have to flee. Hallelujah. When we pray in the name of Jesus, tell me who has the power to oppose in the name of mighty Jesus, we have the victory, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory, we have the victory. Hallelujah, when we pray in the name of Jesus, Tell me who has the power to oppose. We have the victory. I am on the Lord's side. Victory is sure. I am on the Lord's side. Victory is sure. Amen. Victory is sure. I am on the Lord's side. Victory is sure. I am on the Lord's side, victory is sure. I am on the Lord's side, victory is sure. Amen. Victory is sure. Victory is sure. I am on the Lord's side, victory is sure. I am on the Lord's side, victory is sure. Amen. Move on to victory, move on to victory, Jesus has conquered, move on to victory, we are more than conquerors. Move on to victory, our Lord has conquered, move on to victory, we are more than conquerors, amen. Move on to victory, our Lord has conquered, move on to victory. We are more than conquerors. Move on to victory. Move on to victory. The Lord has conquered. Move on to victory. We are more than conquerors. Amen. Move on to victory. Move on to victory. Jesus has conquered. Move on to victory, we are more than conquerors. Move on to victory, the Lord has conquered. 
move on to victory. We are more than conquerors.
and the church said, yeah. I welcome every one of you tonight in Jesus' name. What a night. What a day. Something is going to happen. Today is a special day. Thank God you are here tonight. There's no disappointment tonight. There is no go and come tonight. Tonight, what is the person I'm talking about? You will carry something. Power from on high. The glory of God will come upon your life. Are you ready? And you are going to have, you are going to receive, you are going to possess everything that is delivered today. What are those hands again? Let me bless your hand before we go on. Father, we thank you for tonight. All these your children, our ministers, our members, our invitees, everyone here tonight, anoint their hand with your power in Jesus' name. That as the hand will touch themselves, anointing that breaks every yoke will flow to everyone in Jesus' name. As their hand will write, their hands will hold anything, their hands will be laid on anything, new life, abundant life, supernatural life will come on all those things in Jesus' name. Every weakness taken away. Every battle won tonight. Every sickness totally healed. And you make your people to become conquerors tonight in Jesus' name. Wipe all the tears away. Take all the sorrow away. Do something that your people will rise up in new life and move on to the future in Jesus' name. Confirm it in every life. In Jesus' name I pray. In Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 30. Hebrews 11, verse 30. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. After they were compassed about seven days. By faith, that faith is here tonight. Every wall standing between you and your possession, that wall will be broken down today. The wall that stands between you and your blessing, that wall of demarcation is coming down today. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. For them, the children of Israel, it was a great, great day. A day never to be forgotten. And for us here today, for me, I said for me, and for you, this is a great day. It's a day of victory. It's a day of power. It's a day of conquest. A day for zeros to become heroes. Today, every subtraction in your life will turn to addition. Everything, they used to divide it before they give it to you. Divide it before they give it to you. Multiplication will replace that. Today is a day, the day for captives to become conquerors. And the day for the oppressed to become overcomers. You will walk on the storms of your life. All the problems of your life, congratulations. Today, there's going to be a change. 
there is a turning around tonight in Jesus' name. This is the day for the sick to become sound and strong. Before we go on, let the sick say, You are well. You are healed. You are delivered. Weakness is gone. What's the person I'm talking about? Let the weak say, I am strong because today, this night, there'll be a song in your mouth. It's a day for victims to become victors. It's the day for the poor, the defeated, the weak, the failing, conquered slaves to become strong, become triumphant, become uplifted, become successful achievers. As you look at the children of Israel, let, let me show you the story. We're looking at Joshua chapter 6. In Joshua chapter 6, I'm reading here from verse 1. These children of Israel, you know the story already. They were coming out of the wilderness. And then they had passed through the Jordan River. As they passed over, passed through the Jordan River, Jordan has closed up. And so they were between Jordan and Jericho. They couldn't go back because the water had already come back and it was overflowing all its banks. They couldn't go forward because Jericho was ahead of them. And the walls were thick, the walls were strong, the walls were firm, the walls were deep, the walls were high. Think about that. To go back, impossible. To go forward, impossible. And so Jericho before them and Jordan behind them. It was an impenetrable situation. They were either in the gulf of defeat or they will be at the gate of dominion. Faith turned everything around. And tonight, I said tonight, faith in God will turn everything around in your life. It was faith that won the victory. And today, supernatural conquest is coming upon your life. Hey, look at this, look at this. Joshua chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 1. It says, now Jericho was strictly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war. Go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days, verse 4. And seven priests shall bear the ark, seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day, ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Verse 5, and it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass that when they make a long blast of the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. The wall hindering you shall fall down flat. The wall of demarcation between you and your healing tonight will fall down flat. And the wall of demarcation separation between you and success, between you and achievement, between you and possession, between you 
and your destiny. That wall will fall down tonight in Jesus' name. It says, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up, every man. How many people? Every man. My name is there. And every man. Is your name here? Are you a receiver tonight? Are you an achiever tonight? Are you blessed tonight? Look at your name there. Look at your name there. And the people shall ascend up. Every man stretch before him. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, And Joshua, and Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout, then ye shall shout. Look at verse 16. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. There's going to be shouting tonight. Shout of joy. Shout of testimony. Shout of celebration. Shout of power. Shout of conquest. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Look at verse 20. So, the people shouted, I will shout. I said, I will shout. That voice will come back. That stress will come back. That excitement will come back. That zeal will come back. Everything you have lost. I said everything you have lost. I said everything you have lost. As the Jericho walls will fall down tonight, you will shout. You will sing. You will celebrate. You will rejoice. Verse 20, so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass, always it will come to pass. The promise of God, I said it will come to pass. The defeat of your enemy, I said it will come to pass. The healing of your body, I said it will come to pass. The joy of the Lord, I said it will come to pass. The answer to your prayer, it will come to pass. It says, so the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that that my walls fell down flat so that the people went up into the city. How many people? I said that many of us here tonight. Every man straight before him and he took the city. You will take it tonight. Tonight, before we pray, I'm speaking to you on an unforgettable day of supernatural conquest. An unforgettable day. A day you will never forget. That brain tumor will vanish away. That thing that is packed inside your tummy, they call fibroid. Tonight, tonight, that thing will melt away. And all those problems, all those problems, they are crumbling, they are coming down tonight in Jesus' name. An unforgettable day of supernatural conquest. Three things we're looking at, very simple. Number one, the promise of supernatural conquest is promised. The promise of supernatural conquest. Point number two, the power of speech control. The power of speech control. You see what the Lord told them? He told them, if you are going to bring those Jericho walls down, control your speech. 
Don't talk. Don't make any noise. Until the day and until the time and the moment that I ask you to shout, then you know your hallelujah chorus has begun in heaven. It's going to be registered in your heart. But in order to control their speech, the power of speech control. Point number three, the praise of shouting conquerors. The praise of shouting conquerors. I will praise the Lord. I will exalt the Lord. I have a testimony. You will have a testimony. Point number one, the promise of supernatural conquest. Come back to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 1. Now Jericho was slightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. But look at verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given each of thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. See what the Lord has said here. He said, Joshua, see. What was he looking at? He could see the walls still standing. And the Lord said, see. He could see that nobody could come out, nobody could get in. And God said, see, I have given those three words, the Almighty God said, although the walls are still standing, I have given. The Almighty God said, although the doors are all shut, and it's like you cannot possess, I have given. And the Lord said, see, you are to see with your eyes of faith. And tonight, it's not the walls standing, you cannot, you don't see that anymore, that thing is coming down. It's not the pain in your body, that, one, that thing is going. It's not the swelling in your body, that one is going. It's not the medical report and the x-ray you carry, that one. We're going to forget about that one. See, you will see. You will see a miracle. And you will see the answer to prayer tonight. You will see the supernatural power of the Almighty God tonight in your life, in your body, in your family, in that child, in Jesus' name. See, I have given into thy hand Jericho. Look at that promise. The promise is sure. I have given. It was settled with Abraham. That's what you need to understand. It's not something of today. This thing has been said to long, long ago. See, I have given. I want you to look at uh, Genesis. Look at Genesis chapter 15. I have given. It was settled at that time. And God was just saying, Joshua, before you were born, nothing was settled. And before you became a leader, that thing was settled. And before you came to this point, and before you came today, that thing has been settled. Your salvation has been settled. Long ago at Calvary, your healing has been settled. Long ago at the weeping post, your deliverance has been settled. Long ago, when Jesus broke the hedge of Satan, the hedge of the devil, your possession, your prosperity, everything has been settled long ago. And Joshua was to know, to understand, see, Joshua, I have given. Let's come to Genesis chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 15, verse 6. And he believed in the Lord and... He counted it to him for righteousness. Look at verse 7. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the earth of the Chaldees to give thee this land and to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me and heifer, of three years old, and a she goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these, 
and he divided them in the midst, and he laid each piece one against another. But the birds he divided not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. The sacrifice had been offered. And when some fowls came to defile and to take away the sacrifice, Abraham drove them away. And now look at verse 18. In verse 18, here you find where it was settled. In the same day, the Lord made the covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. That's when it was settled. That's when it was settled. It's not, you know, the people of Jericho, that's nothing. All the walls, that's nothing. And even whatever fear may be in the heart of any of the children of Israel, all that was nothing. It was settled with Abraham. I have given from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Not only that, this that we're talking about had also been sealed in heaven because it was confirmed unto Moses. This same promise, behold, see, I have given. Look at this. I'm reading to you from Numbers. Numbers chapter 33. I have given. Your blessing is sure tonight. Your deliverance is secure tonight. Because it's been settled. It's been given. And it says in Numbers chapter 33. I'm reading here from verse 53. Verse 53. And ye shall dispossess, dispossess the inhabitants of the land and shall dwell therein for tell me i have given you the land to possess it you know it's not something of today it's not like maybe it will be done maybe it will not be done the thing was very sure because it was first of all settled with abraham and then it was confirmed to Moses, and eventually it was sealed in heaven. We're looking at Deuteronomy chapter 2. Deuteronomy chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 24. Deuteronomy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 24. Rise ye up, take your journey, pass over the river Anon. Behold, tell me then. Behold, tell me there, I have given into thine hand, Sihon, the Amorite, anyone standing before you to hinder at the possession I have given unto you. The king of Heshbon and his land begin to possess it. When are you going to begin? Today, today, today. Begin to possess it. Health, begin to possess Deliverance begin to possess. Victory begin to possess. And everything you have been desiring, could I have this? Possess. Can I receive that? Possess. Can I enjoy that one? Possess. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. This day, verse 25, will I begin to put the dredge of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven, who shall hear the report of thee, and they shall tremble, and be in anguish because of thee. We're coming to Joshua. Joshua, chapter 1, I have given. Somebody there has received Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. Every place. Somebody help me shout every place. Every promise you claim. Every word you receive. Every ground you stand on. Everything you claim tonight. Give me a good amen now. Every place, every place, the sole of your foot shall tread upon 
that, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Do you see that? It's been settled. And it is settled. And it is done. The promise of supernatural conquest. Look at chapter 8, Joshua. Chapter 8. I'm reading from verse 1. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the men of war with thee. Arise and go up. Arise and go up. You won't sit in the valley again. The valley of despondency, we're defeated. No, you are not defeated. We have failed. No, we have not failed. That one is of the past. That water has gone under the bridge, never to be remembered again. Now is the day, the day of power, the day of conquest, the day of victory, and the day of answered prayer. Today is the day, the day of victory. And so it says, see, that's verse one, see. I have given into thy hand. You see that? I have given. It's been settled long ago. Now, all that God was telling Joshua now is a renewal of what had been given already. Now, in your case. Now, in my case. Now, in our case. The Lord has given us everything to enjoy, everything to possess, everything to testify about. Look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 27. And I'm reading here from verse 23. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. Every obstacle is cleared out of your way. Fear not, my brother, fear not, my sister. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee. Did you hear that? We've been reading Old Testament, Old Testament. Now we come to the New Testament, and it is still the same thing. It says, God has given you all that sail with thee. Your wife will be part of this blessing. Your husband will be part of this blessing. Your children are part of this blessing. Anyone you are concerned about, they are part of this one. Look at this, look at this. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be. I believe God that it shall be. Tonight, I believe God that it shall be. That promise, I believe God that it shall be. That healing, I believe God that it shall be. That deliverance, I believe God that it shall be. It shall be even as it was told me. I believe. I said, I believe. I can see the blessing flow into your heart right now. I can see the miracle flow in your way right now. Look at look at Second Peter, Second Peter chapter one, Second Peter chapter one. I'm reading from verse three. You have it already. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 according as his divine power has given unto us you see that see I have given he has given unto us he has given unto us why should anybody here I don't know about the people outside there but anybody inside this place tonight say hey, what do I have how can I have look at this one you've got something I said you've got something it says it says according as his divine power he has given not that he will give this one is settled salvation settled Healing, settled. Deliverance, settled. Success, settled. Achievement, settled. Miracle children for the barren, settled. 
look at this, look at this. According as his divine power, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby a given unto us, well, we're just saying us, us every time, whereby a given unto me. Do you have it? Do you possess it? Are you going to enjoy it? Anybody going to shout tonight? Anybody going to testify tonight? Anybody going to possess tonight? Yeah. Whereby you yeah, are giving unto us, unto me, exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, as it was with Joshua, as it was with the children of Israel, the promise to you is sure. It was purchased by Christ. He was there on the cross of Calvary. And he shared his blood. And he paid the whole price. Any blessing you need from salvation to glorification. From justification to coronation. And from the beginning to the very end, Jesus Christ has purchased everything. That's why the promise is sure. Not only that, number two, it's been settled in heaven. Before he came from the foundation of this world, before he came to this world, he settled it with the Father. Why am I going to the world? Why am I going to die? Why am I going to shed my blood? So that you will help all those descendants of Adam to recover everything they lost in the Garden of Eden. And before he ever came, it was settled in heaven. It was confirmed by the Father. Confirmed by the Father. He having risen up and is now seated on the right hand of the Father. He has shed this force. He has given us this, which he now see and hear. It was revealed by the Spirit. Revealed by the Spirit. The Father is involved. I have given unto you. Jesus is involved. I have given unto you. The Holy Ghost is involved. I have given unto you. It was announced by angels. It was announced by angels. They announced it. They said, and in fact, they shouted for joy. When Jesus came to this world, all those angels looking ahead as to what you are going to have today. I said looking ahead as to what you are going to have today. They sang for joy. It was proclaimed by faithful servants of God. And now it's recorded in his holy book. It's recorded for you that it is done. For you, I said, it is done. Yeah. Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 4. We're reading from verse 17. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17, remember Joshua? See, Joshua, I have given unto you. The walls were still there. I have given unto you. The doors were still shut. I have given unto you. It appears nothing was changing. And all the same God said, I have given unto you. What was God trying to educate Joshua about? Look at this in Romans chapter 4. Reading from verse 17. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him who may believe, even God, who quickness the dead, every part, every cell in your body is quaking tonight. Yeah. And call it those things which be not as though they were. And call it those things which be not as though they were. Hold on, hold on. Stop for a moment. Because God said, Joshua, see, I have given unto you. See it before you sense it. See it before you sense it. I don't have any feeling in my body yet, but it's done. I can't see anything physical, but it is done. 
the walls are still standing there, but it is done. See it before you sense it. Believe it before you behold it. Because it's just a matter of minutes from now, you will see it very clearly. You will experience it in your life. As we're going back home and you came in the bus, you came in the, you came in a taxi, you came in your personal car, you cannot resist singing and shouting tonight. The singing from this, from this, from this, I have overcome. See, I have overcome. See, I have overcome. Believe it before you behold it. Declare it before you discover it. You know, you're still wondering, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Declare it before you discover it. Reckon it done before you realize it. You reckon it, it is done. I said, it is done. I said, it is done. Miracle upon your life. Deliverance upon your life. Reckon it before you realize it. Praise him for it before you possess it. That's why he told them the walls were still standing. He said, shout, shout. Be excited because something is happening to you today. You'll agree with God. I said you'll agree with God. And so you announce it before you achieve it. You announce it before you achieve it because already it is settled in heaven. Already, Christ has purchased it for you. Already, the Spirit has revealed it tonight. Already, the Father has confirmed it. Already, the angels have announced it. Already, it is written and recorded in God's holy book. Announce it before you achieve it. And then, look at that latter part of verse 17. And call us those things which be not as though they were. Count it done before you confirm it done. Count it done before you confirm it done. It's like, uh, you know, while you are sitting down there now, you can begin to count your blessings tonight. I said, you can begin to count your blessings tonight. Those blind eyes will open. That way that hand will be stretched out. Those limb legs will walk. That thing swollen your body will, will pack its load and go away. That tormenting spirit will leave you totally tonight. And that problem, that problem you've been trying to conquer, to conquer, to conquer. And, and then you say tonight, praise the Lord, count your blessings, name them one by one. Because tonight, miracles will be multiplied in your life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 18, look at verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he may become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Those dim eyes will become bright tonight. Partial blindness will vanish away tonight in Jesus' name. Look at this. It says, he was not weak in faith. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded. Somebody there tonight is fully persuaded. I said somebody there tonight is fully persuaded. I'm persuaded that blessing has come to me. I'm persuaded that healing has come to me. I'm persuaded that my mountain has gone tonight. I'm persuaded that the yoke is broken tonight. I'm persuaded these Jericho walls will fall down tonight. Any persuaded brother there? Any persuaded sister there? It is done. I said, it is done. Look at that verse. Look at that verse. It says, be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. There's performance here tonight. Uh, look at number two now. The power 
of speech control. The power of speech control. Uh, we're looking at Joshua. Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. And we're reading here from verse 10. Joshua chapter 6. Reading from verse 10. You see, the children of Israel, the majority of them, the older generation, they had had much problem with their tongue rather than with their eyes. Much problems, many problems with their tongue rather than their feet. Much problem, many problems with their tongue rather than their hands. And they had the problem of uncontrolled speech. That made them, many of them, to lose their health. Because they began to speak against God and against Moses, and serpents came biting them. Many of them were dying. They lost their health. They lost their righteous standing and their security. Because the protection was taken away from them. Because of the problem of their tongue. They lost their protection. They lost divine favor. God said, I'm not going to be with them anymore. They're stiff necked they're stubborn, they're self willed, and they're always talking, blaspheming my name. They lost power and authority. They lost victory over the enemy through their tongue. They lost great privileges. Many of them missed the land flowing with milk and with honey. They were to learn their lesson once and for all. That victory comes as we do not follow the old pattern of using or misusing our tongue. They were to learn the power of silence therapy. It's a therapy. When the speech is controlled, when the tongue is controlled, when the mouth and the lips, when they come under control, it's a therapy. And they were to learn about this silence therapy. Look at this again. In Joshua chapter 6 and verse 10, And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice, neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth. Why are we going around? No word out of your mouth. Why is it they don't allow us uh, to use uh, axes and digger? No word out of your mouth. Why is it uh, Joshua is making us to go around and nothing is happening? And then we see now a second day and suddenly no word out of your mouth. Why is it he doesn't bring all the men and push the wall? Nothing out of your mouth. Silence therapy. They ought to be quiet because it says there will be no word proceeding out of your mouth until the day I bid you shout then you shall shout. Let me show you the power of speech control. Second Kings, Second Kings chapter 18. In Second Kings chapter 18, we're reading from verse 35. Second Kings chapter 18, reading from verse 35. It says in verse 35, who are they? Among all the gods of the countries, here was the threatening of the enemy that had delivered their country out of my hand, and that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. Look at this, verse 36. But the people, what did they do? Held their peace and answered him not a word. Don't answer your enemies, heaven will answer them. Don't answer your detractors. Heaven will answer them. Don't answer the people that say, we will see the way you will go. And they have been telling you, miracle will happen, that will happen, that will happen. We're going to stand here and we're going to disturb you. If you, if you thought, uh, you know, we are cowards and we are uh, not able to confront you, we are the people disturbing you. And we're going to do it. And they talk to you face to face. Don't answer them, God will answer them. It says they held their peace 
and answered him not a word. For the king's commandment was saying, tell me, what did he say? I said, tell me, what did he say? Answer him not. You see, that is the secret of victory. Answer him not. You know, he came bragging. He came condemning. He came boasting. He came saying, I will show you. I will deliver you. I will level you. I will scatter you. I will destroy you. And you think that the people would have said, let somebody talk now. Let somebody reply him now. Did they reply him? No, because it says they answered him not, for the king had said, answer him not a word. Let's see what follows. Chapter 19 now. Chapter 19 now. We're looking at verse 14. In chapter 19, verse 14, and Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Ezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. Spread that letter before the Lord. They are threatening. Spread that letter before the Lord. They are boasting. Spread that letter before the Lord. And all the boasting they are making will destroy you, will finish you, will scatter everything you are looking for. He spread it before the Lord. And that letter, everything will be forgotten. I said everything will be forgotten. And look at, look at verse 31. In verse 31 it says, For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant, and they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord shall do this. It's the zeal of the Lord that will do it tonight. Now verse 35. And it came to pass... Is he coming to pass tonight? In your life, is he coming to pass tonight? In your family, is he coming to pass tonight? And it came to pass that night. Which night? That night. I said, when is your miracle? When is your conquering? It says, and it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians, and hundred, four score, and five thousand. And when they arose early in the morning, tell me, shout it out. This is your victory. I said, this is your dominion. This is your deliverance. Behold, they were all dead. Dead corpses, dead corpses. But watch your mouth, watch your mouth. You know the victory, how they had the victory? Did you see anything? Silence therapy, quietness therapy. We're looking at Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 5. We're looking at verse 6. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Don't allow your mouth to make you lose the victory, to make you lose your possession, to make you lose the miracle, to make you lose the power of God. It says, Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God, be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of thy hands. Learn the power of speech control. Isaiah chapter 7. In Isaiah chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 7, verse 4. And say unto him, take heed and be quiet. Take heed and be quiet. After all, that sickness is moving away tonight. Take heed and be quiet. After all, that mountain is going away tonight. Take heed and be quiet. After all, that problem is having a solution tonight, a supernatural solution tonight in Jesus' name. 
take heed and be quiet. After all, all that barrenness is something of the past. Everything is vanishing away tonight. Take heed and be quiet. I am, you know, suffering. Take heed and be quiet. I am bleeding. Take heed and be quiet. I am going through a terrible time. Take heed and be quiet. With that quietness tonight, and with that speech control tonight, the power of God will pass through and sweep through your life. And every good thing that had been ordained for you to have, you will have them tonight in Jesus' name. And say unto him, and say unto him, and say unto her, take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted, for the two tales of these smoking fire brands for the fierce anger of raising was Syria and of the son of Remaliah. Because Syria, Ephraim, and the son of Remaliah are taking evil counsel against this sin. Let us go up against Judah and vex it, and let us make a breach therein for us and set a king. in the midst of each, even the son of Tebel. Thus says the Lord, it shall not stand. Thus says the Lord, it shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. What our enemies are saying, it shall not stand. All those conspiracies, it shall not stand. They will destroy him, it shall not stand. They come in the dream, it shall not stand. He must die this 